Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up PCSX2 on your ROG Alloy. And this works for, obviously, I've got ROG Alloy X, but it works for ROG Alloy as well. Just want to get this out there. This video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. And yeah, let's get going. So first of all, you know, you need some games. And I've got my game stored. Again, the other thing is I've got an external mouse connected. Just helps navigate in. But you can just use the touch screen directly or even the right analog stick. Right analog stick will only work if you press of these two left buttons. Press the bottom one. There we go. And you want to make sure your control mode is on auto. And this is another little tip coming later in this video regarding the control mode on auto or desktop. And from that, I can use this as like a mouse. Okay. And then you would use, yeah, you would use, uh, you know, the trigger. You know, what are they actually calling me on here? RT. So like Xbox controller, RT as right mouse click. And you would do rb this one here on the front uh the left mouse click okay now that we got that out of the way let me show you my games i've got them on an sd card recommend organizing them got them in the folder called roms in ps2 and we got them right here so ignore the other ones as just ones that are being automatically created because they were on my mac this micro sd card was so it's the bin and the q files and honestly the q file you don't really need these days but the bin file that is the you know the main game okay so the next thing you need to do is download the pcsx2 emulator if you launch up your web browser if you're using chrome or you can use the built-in edge browser and you just click here the keyboard will appear you type in pcsx2 go to the home page you want to go to download go to latest stable click installer We'll start downloading i'm going to cancel it because i've already got it and now if you open your downloads folder or where it's installed and you literally just open it up click yes let me focus on this a bit there we go okay so you want to go to standard installation click next and you can choose somewhere else to install it click next next and create a desktop shortcut i'm going to do that i'm just focusing a bit okay click install here we go doesn't take long at all okay so we're going to launch it up you can always just open the icon and now can leave this as default click next you need some bios files for you know legal reasons i cannot show you where to get them but honestly, if you google you know bios files for ps2 like you can find them it's not difficult and also on a side note uh, my patreon page will be launching very very soon where you can subscribe for all the latest emulation content and exclusive content you know around all of the you know this cool crazy stuff that you know can't get anywhere else so stay tuned for that and i've got it right here so if you have your zip file right click it and you can right click by you know remember the trigger or just keep in the screen pressed so right click i'm going to go to extract all click extract and now you want to copy all of these files right click and copy is there you want to go to open bios folder paste it close this down close this down click refresh list click next okay you may select one sorry my bad we'll select that one click next now we need to add a game directory so click add and again mine's on the sd card roms ps2 and just click select this folder do you want to recursively scan as well so this is just if you have folders within the folder if you've organized it further don't do this if you've just randomly placed your ps2 roms you know maybe in the c drive because that will just go for folder after folder that takes a long time and it's just you know a waste of time but that was that is also another reason why you definitely should be organizing your directory so yeah click yes and it's picked up the directory fantastic click next and now for the controllers 
and I'm only going to map one DualShock 2 and do automatic mapping and I'm going to do SDL. Click next and we're done. Finish. And now let's quickly go over the settings for PCSX2 and then we'll cover the you know the gamepad and then we're pretty much done to launch up a game. So settings, click on interface and here's another tip if these kind of look squashed to you, you want to make sure if you go to settings and if you go to display when it pops up, or system display for scale, do the recommended. I usually have it at 175%, but it, it, it gets squashed and it's hard to read things. Again, that's just a little tip. Yeah, I just need to reopen that. Systems, interface. Where did it go? Okay, so most of this you can leave as default. You could, you know, change the start full screen if you want that. Game list, you can add extra game folders. BIOS, if you want to change that. Emulation, again, you're going to leave this all as default. In graphics, here where you here is where you can make it look better. And I always recommend, generally speaking, getting the game running and then tweaking it. But to be fair, this is a powerful system relative to the PS, you know, or PCSA, not PS2, I should say, because the emulation is different to the original system. So relative to what PCSX2 requires. So in rendering, this is the main thing what you want to change is the internal resolution. You can increase this. So that point really going beyond something like 3X, because this is 1080, and that's what the screen is, is 1080. There's also texture filtering, there's an isotropic filtering as well. But again, the main one is that well, I'll show you the difference you know shortly. Um, you can do post-processing, you can also add FXAA, some so some anti-aliasing. But I find increasing the resolution is more than sufficient. In audio, you can leave this as it is, except in backend, make sure you've got something selected. And uh, you know, cube is fine, cube B, but make sure it's not no. I've had it when I've downloaded something like an emulator or an app, and by default it's got no audio device selected for some reason. Okay, memory card, you want to create one, so click create. And you know, again, there's all these different ones. Do 8 meg as again, that is the most compatible. And we need to provide a name. So I'm just going to call it memory card one. Memory. Card one, click. Yeah, click enter, that's just clicked OK. And we can just go to and if we click that, just drag that on, and there we go. And we can do the same for memory card two if you want. And everything else you can leave as is. The only last thing that we need to show you now is setting up your pad, the game controller. Click settings, go to what is it? Controllers. And in here, the main thing you want to go, go to is controller port 1, DualShock 2. So you want to select DualShock 2. And you can do automatic mappings. And I recommend the SDL controller. You can, you know, decide if you want to go to, like, the keyboard controller as well. So this is something to bear in mind. And I recommend, if you press this button, to select this as gamepad. And as soon as you do that, this will not work. Just, just for game and emulation, the, especially emulation, the reason being, because if you have your own auto, it sometimes goes on keyboard mode. And when you go full screen, the B button will go out of full screen. So it's not right. So you want it in gamepad and you want it set to SDL. Okay. And then if you want to customize, you could click up. And I could press the right key. And I could press, you know, B as well. You can do all sorts of stuff, but I'll remap it how it is. You can also clear mapping as well. Click close, and that's it. And the last thing I want to show you is if you right-click this, you can set a cover image as well, so you can upload. I'll keep saying last thing, there's a few things. And in here, you can also, where is it? If we go to properties, you can set properties for your game. So you can change the, you know, literally every single setting specifically for this game if you want. So if you know one game runs better with one setting, one game runs better with another, you can do that. And you can enable like patches as well, which is pretty cool. And you can enable cheats and add them. I will have a separate video for cheats.
And that's it. And then we can launch it. Double click it. If you would like to go full screen, uh, you literally just double tap in the middle using either the screen or your mouse, like so. If you're obviously using an external mouse and it's still appearing there, you literally just tap. And if you want to go out of here, you double tap, like so. That's it. Make sure the volume's on so you can hear. So I'm just going to get in game, load up a level to show you it working and then just change the sort of, you know, that resolution, rendering resolution to the one I would recommend. And honestly, most games will be fine because you got to remember PS2 is not that hard to emulate in terms of raw power and the actual architecture. Let's skip this compared to something like a PS3 or something like a Wii U or an Xbox 360, for example. So this is a great system for emulation we can run you know switch games we can run ps3 games wii u games the whole shebang but it also means the you know games like ps2 games work really well not because with steam deck so let me launch this up they worked really well but i felt like there was some compromises in terms of you know upping the resolution and it wasn't quite like it was good Whereas with this is fantastic. Okay. And if you want to see the frame rate, click this button here. Oh, oh, let me. There you go. Click the bottom one, and you want to go to real time monitor. I prefer square. You can just put it there if you want, so it's less, it doesn't obstruct the screen that much. Let me just focus. I just try to focus on the wall gallery. Again, still looks pretty good, but if you want it sharper, pause it. If you double tap and go to settings. And you can do it for individual game orders for the whole, every game. Every game, I would recommend go to rendering and go to three times, so 1080, which is what the native resolution is. Now, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it does look sharp and it still runs silky smooth. So this is the resolution that I would recommend. Okay, last thing I want to show you, if you, you know, double tap, if you go to system, you know, you can use the touch screen. It's as easy if you use the mouse, but you can use this obviously. If you, that's what you have, that's what you would do. You wanna to go to save state, go to save slot one, and this is one of the best things about emulators. Let me just turn this off. If I click yes. And now what I'm gonna do is launch up PCSX2 again. Double click it. So this is going through the whole process. Whereas if we go to system, load state, load slot one, it literally takes me back to where I saved it. So you're not dependent on the internal save system for you know the game and you don't even know where that is. Some games are really, really difficult. You have to go through all the intro again. Oh, that was so annoying. So some games like Black where you couldn't skip the intro super annoying but yeah with this you don't have that issue whatsoever you can save on load states so that is how you set up the pcsx2 emulator on your rog alloy x and rog alloy if you have any questions feel free to post down below in the comments if you like the video give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and also stay tuned for the patreon page which again will have all the exclusive 
you know, emulation content that we can't get over here. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.